Back with you now on the newsfeed late night to what President Zuma is doing is not defiance or of the Constitution. That is according to the spokesperson of Umkonto Sizu Military Veterans Association, Carl Nihaz. Well, today, as he addressed the media on uh, former President Jacob Zuma's non-appearance at the Zondo Commission, uh, that's what he outlines. He joins us now to give us more. Carl, good evening and thank you very much for your time tonight. Hope you can hear me. Uh, the uh, decision by the Commission of Inquiry today to uh, now uh, appeal to the Constitutional Court to take a decision uh, on uh, what should happen uh, as far as President Jacob Zuma's non-appearance at the Commission is concerned. However, noting it that they will be praying on the court to uh, uh, give a jail sentence. What's your reaction? All right, we seem to have uh, not made that connection with Carl Niehaus. Uh, he is on there, but I uh, wonder if he can hear me. So, Carl, we'll try and uh, get a reaction from you in just a moment. But let's uh, talk a little bit to what their letter is saying. They're saying that um, uh, the, the members of MKMVA uh, in full camouflage uniform who formed a guard of honor at the gates of President Zuma in Nkandla were there to deliver a message to the president that uh, they stand in unwavering support uh, to him. Uh, but they also saying that deep concerns that were expressed uh, to the president uh, about the terribly divided and factional state of the African National Congress and the demonstrable fact that the NEC of the ANC fails to give decisive uh, leadership on matters of radical economic transformation. Meanwhile, Guazulu Natal ANC chairperson Sikhezi Galala has said that the ANC's leadership must engage former President Jacob Zuma on the issue of not showing up at the Zondo Commission, adding that Zuma's non-appearance at the Zondo Commission will have a negative effect uh, on the ANC. Guazulu Natal ANC chairperson Sikhezi Galala joins us now for more on this. Uh, Premier, good evening and thank you very much uh, for your time. Now, there are voices within the organization, the ANC, uh, including uh, voices coming from the Umkonto Esuse Military Veterans Association, others coming from the Umkonto Esuse National Council, but uh, we've also seen uh, branches of the ANC in Eteguini uh, ventilating their voices on this one. Is this an indication of a divided factional ANC? Well, I would not want to just take it as a factional division, but it's an expression of support by certain members of the ANC. What becomes prevalent in such situation is that there are those who will be there and it will seem like they support former President Zuma more than others. And those who are not there, they will be like, they are not supporting him. I would want to assume that all of us believe that this is a situation which we should have not be, uh, we should have not landed on. We should have tried to avoid this situation. It is because of that reason that as the ANC in Guazulu Natal, we believe that the engagement with former president is quite important. But not to say he must just subject himself uh, to the commission, but he must go there and ensure that all issues he want to raise, his concerns about his rights that are being trampled should be engaged in the proper platforms. And the proper platforms to deal with these issues might be the judiciary and the commission itself. How would you say this matter would have been avoided? I mean, talk to me about, for example, the channel in which this matter could have been raised. Because uh, if indeed you're talking of a united and a unified ANC, uh, you've got a resolution of the NEC that says all members of the ANC must respect and cooperate with the work of the commission. Uh, I don't see how you, should, you would have a, a, a member of the ANC all of a sudden say, well, we are going to go to, to Nkandla and, and, and demonstrate and show our support for the non-compliance with the summons by the commission. Yeah, the way that we should have uh, avoided this situation is to ensure that the legal team 
of former president and the commission engage on these issues and try to find each other on time to ensure that we are not at this stalemate. With regard to the members of the ANC, we would want to engage on that process internally to ensure that former president, when he's given support, that support is not interpreted in a way that undermines the ANC structures, unity of the ANC, and the ANC interpret. Akadi House, uh, thanks for joining us on the line as well on this conversation. I was asking earlier on, what is your reaction to the decision by the uh, Commission of Inquiry into State Capture to approach the Concord to have a decision uh, on the contempt of court matter for non-appearance of uh, former President Jacob Zuma today? Well, I think it's an unfortunate decision by the Deputy Chief Justice because this just adds to the tension. It heats up the pressure. This is not the kind of situation that we need. What we need is a situation where we understand the reasons why President Zuma had taken the decision that he had taken. And I have emphasized several times in interviews today that President Zuma had done that not in defiance of the Constitution, but because he wants to defend the Constitution on the basis that he believes, and we share that belief with him, that his constitutional rights, including also his rights to remain silent, has been taken away by the Constitutional Court. And I must emphasize, President Zuma has repeatedly said that he is quite prepared to be, appear in front of the Commission, but his concern is with the biasness of Mr. Justice Zondu and his concern, as it was expressed also in the letter from his lawyers today, that Mr. Justice Zondu went to the Constitutional Court while at a lower court, at the High Court, there was an appeal to Mr. Justice Zondu's decision not to recuse himself from the Commission of Inquiry into state capture. All right, let's, so let's, let, uh, Carl, Carl, let's tackle that very slowly. Let's tackle the first the issue that you're raising, the issue of uh, uh, mm -hmm. former President Zuma's rights being taken away. I thought that matter was clarified legally today, even by the Constitutional Court, that that was never a right that uh, uh, former President Jacob Zuma had. A right to remain silent is a right that is given to an accused in a matter. But when you're a witness and you take the witness stand, you have a privilege not to incriminate yourself. And that was never taken away from uh, the former president. Well, it's a strange situation because on the one hand, it is said that he doesn't have the right to remain silent. But at the same time, it is being said that he will not incriminate or he uh, should not incriminate himself. In fact, what the Constitutional Court said was that when he wants to invoke his right to remain silent, he must then explain why he wants to remain silent. Now, that's very, very strange because in the process of explaining, obviously, you are already compromising your right to remain silent. No, when, 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 he, when he invokes, that, this, that's, that's where we conflate the issues, Carl. When he invokes his privilege not to incriminate himself, that cannot be done without giving an explanation as to where would that uh, conflict be. But the right to remain silent is a right that a witness in a matter does not have. He never had. The, 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 the judges in the Constitutional Court did not take it away from the president. It's just a right that was not there. Well, I'm very surprised that you say that because at the same time, there is a clear constitutional provision that says every citizen in this country has the right to remain silent and not incriminate themselves. Who is an and accused in a matter, in yes. Notabu, can you hear me clearly? Yes, I'm surely saying who is, an accu of, who is an accused in a matter, not a witness. You're coming to give witness of what you saw, right? You have a privilege but not you to incriminate also know yourself. Very well, you also know very well that the Zonda Commission had changed the parameters of its work and that it is possible for people to be charged on the basis of the evidence that they have provided at the Commission. Yes. So if you look at it in that fashion, you understand that it is quite possible for yourself to incriminate yourself if you do not have the right to remain silent. So this situation is far more complex than the way that you try to present in this questioning of me.
All right, Carl Nihaz, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, the Premier of uh, Guazulu Natal, Sikhezi Galala, uh, still with us, uh, uh, ANC chairperson in this particular case. There is uh, a voice that comes uh, also, Premier, uh, that uh, seeks to suggest that there is a failure here by the NEC to, to show leadership in this particular matter. Uh, what, is your, what is your sentiment? Well, as explained by the NEC, the decision of the NEC is that the national officials must engage with former president because as the ANC and as the leaders of the ANC, we have to take responsibility and respect all uh, laws of our country as well as the constitution, but also respect the organs that have been put in place. And that's why the decision is to engage with former president in a way that will help and ensure that we mitigate in this situation. Yeah, but we're better to have expressed the concerns by the president done in a court of law. I mean, because it has become by and large a, a, a legal matter more than it is a political matter. And when, when you I, take the engagement to a political space, you are making it now a political issue which would require a political solution. Yes, we don't seek a political solution on this matter. And that's why we agree that his lawyers have a full right and a responsibility to take the matter to the, to the court. And as they are saying that the issue of the, uh, of the constitutional court came while they had appealed uh, in a lower court, we say that is fine, but that must be tested uh, in the process. And that's why we are saying we should not pretend as if or there should be no impression that suggests that any of us is undermining the organs of the state or the constitution. What do you make of the call by the ANC's uh, 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 National Council? They are saying ANC's NEC's, uh, NEC should take a firm decision and act against its members who defy the commission, including those who expressly support in public such irresponsible acts of contempt of the terms of the Judicial Commission of Inquiry. Look, it will not be easy for me to speak on behalf of the national structure of the ANC, but such statements are not going to help us. As you have seen, one part of Umkondo Wesizwe was there supporting former president and they were in Uganda. Another part is saying, no, we should take a decision uh, to expel all others uh, who support former president. And we don't believe that we can resolve this situation through public aspect or through differing with each other in public. Problems of this nature need internal engagement so that we try to find each other as members of the ANC. A KZN ANC Chairperson, Sikhia Zigalala, appreciate your time and thank you very much for joining us tonight on the news feed. Late night.